What's going on guys? We are back tonight with another spooky Halloween deck for you. So we're going to do another one tonight. A little bit different than the one from yesterday. Want to showcase the new card here for you, Ghoul. So we did a little Ghouls and Goblins brew here. So let's take a look at the new card, Ghoul. It says, when returned, if your deck has five or more brilliant human body cards... Uh, your Brilliant Human Body cards lose 30 until played, and this card gains plus 150 perm. So, interesting. Tough to say how good it's going to be because it is hurting five of your cards. So, this did feel like it just slots perfectly into the Vitruvian Consciousness deck already. <clears throat> so, obviously, Consciousness is a Brilliant Human Body card itself. So, it losing that 30 isn't such a huge deal because you're buffing you know your entire deck so it feels okay uh and then obviously vitruvian man is also buffing plus 18 until played on your entire deck so you've got these two basically doing plus 36 until played why this is minus 30 until played on those five cards so it kind of washes out i feel like but it still does make those cards weaker right but I feel like it could almost guarantee you win those rounds that you play this card towards the late game. So, I don't know. We'll see how it plays out. Uh, you guys can let me know in the comments after what you thought of the card and if it seems, if it seems viable. Right, let's take a look at the rest of the cards. We got Biometrics when played if your deck has four or more brilliant human body cards, which it does. Uh, wherever they are, they gain plus 17 until played. And then if this card matches the arena... We get an additional uh, on our hands in the eye card, plus 38 until played. So we did add eye uh, when played. Your brilliant human body, get that plus 20 until played. So that helps kind of cancel out ghoul a little bit as well. And hands says when drawn, your cards in hand gain plus 5 until played. Uh, last one we have is the heart. It's just going to be our hold card, kind of buffing up brilliant human body again trying to offset a little bit more of that plus 12 until played. So <clears throat> rest of the deck, we've got Door to Hell, kind of fits the Halloween theme a little bit, that, you know, little hell action. Same with Grim Reaper, kind of fits the Halloween theme as well when drawn. Uh, if it's round one or two, your opponents lose 32 on their cards in hand. Three or four, they lose 16. And if it's after round four, you lose uh, minus 16 perm, but again, we're going to try to cycle this so that doesn't happen on that last uh, turn of the game, hopefully. That's the, the hope anyway, right? Let's take a look at these Halloween cards. We got the Witch, going to make all these cards a little bit cheaper for us. We got Plague, which says if you uh, played a card with death in the name, your opponent loses 100 next turn, so we do rock death in this deck. Basically just taking advantage of his playability. The card opposite uh, loses 50 this turn. We've got Count Dracula. Going to buff our horrible Halloween cards. Uh, plus 40 this turn. And if played on a Halloween arena, you're going to get that plus another plus 40 this turn. So that could be really strong. <clears throat> there is a horrible Halloween arena in this deck or in this week. Uh, Dr. Jekyll. Is going to buff Hyde 35. Hyde's going to buff Jekyll 35. So those cards get pretty big for really cheap. And Ghost, obviously, for the energy. And it's a Halloween card. Uh, finally, oh, we do have another uh, brilliant human body I missed here. Oxytocin, when played, all cards in both players' hands gained 15 this turn. And your remaining cards in hand gained plus 20 until played. Not the greatest card there, but... Uh, there wasn't too many great options. I didn't want to start delving into touch and hands and, or not hands, uh, tongue and hearing and all those cards. So this felt like an easier slot that didn't have requirements attached to it anyway. <clears throat> but that's the deck. Uh, pretty straightforward here. Like I said, it felt like this ghoul wants to be in a Vitruvian consciousness deck. So that's the route we went. Just seems, seems pretty straightforward. So... I'm sure that's how, this is probably going to be very similar to how most people play Ghoul, if I had to guess. Something along these lines. Maybe not exactly to the, to the T with like Reaper or Zoro or, you know, Oxytocin, but, you know, something similar, I would imagine. So let's go try this bad boy out. You guys can tell me what you think at the end. 
in the comments, you know, just drop me a drop me a little comment there, wink wink. You guys know I miss you. I feel like I feel like I haven't got a lot of comments lately. Nobody nobody wants to chat with me, you know. There's no love. No love for Brandon. Alright, let's see what we got here. Halloween off the off the rip. Okay. Let's see. Sure, we'll do that. And let's drop you. Nice little jump on him right out the rip. Almost 400 power there. <clears throat> what are we up against? Dark web deck, huh? Interesting. Doesn't feel like a great week for dark web, honestly. But maybe. All right, we drew our door to hell, so we're playing that. Got a paleo card there, so let's let's hit that one. It's probably uh, Tully. Oh, unicorn. Okay. Hmm. Good good time for Zoro too, because he had three cards in his hand. Perfect timing. Perfect timing. You hate to see it. Yeah, I hate to see a Zoro when you only play two cards. All right, so this one feels like it's in the bag here. We're just going to drop these two Halloween cards with our Grim. Let's do it like this. Ooh, he's got a strong late game, though, I can see. So definitely potential for him to hurt us late. <clears throat> All right, good start for us. We kind of know we're going to win the Halloween round, though, right? At least we should. If we don't, then we're <laughs> really not doing good. Still haven't seen death, so I got to hold on to Plague Doctor there. This Vitruvian Consciousness should help us, though. Nice big buff. Ooh, Frankenstein's Monster. Look at you. Getting a little spicy over there, Nikos. So what's the topic for today, guys? <clears throat> Here's what I'm thinking. Immortality. <laughs> so I uh, saw an article today that was discussing immortality. Um basically humans search for immortality and it was a what was it the guy said by so basically right now if you lived if you can live to 2050 so 2000 the year 2050 uh they they believe that humans will be able to live forever by that point so we will either have the technology to or be able to you know, create our own organs and replace organs in our body. It was pretty neat. Like, he, kind of the science and stuff. The guy, it was like some scientist talking about it, but <clears throat> essentially that we would be able to live forever. So, um, they mentioned um, kind of similar to the, that one movie, what was it, Carbon, like Altered Carbon, I think was the name of it. Basically where they stick a chip in your head and the chip... Uh, is connected to like your spine and your brain brainstem, and they upload your mind, basically using this chip into like a cloud database or like a server. So in that aspect, basically living forever, but you're in, you know, in in the cloud. <laughs> so I thought that was interesting too. Like, can you imagine like basically you, your body dies, but somehow they're still able to upload your consciousness into a into the internet or something <laughs> be so crazy to think about or make make a virtual reality world for you to live in or even take your consciousness and hook it up to like a robot like a you know some type of genetically made robot that now you can still walk around like a person but you're you're you know machine <clears throat> but still thinking like you would right now you know crazy to me i can't even imagine my first thought would be, oh, so what happens if they, that 
world they create if you're let's say you're like a killer you know or, or something terrible not that not that i am but just you know something terrible like you're you know you're a killer are they gonna stick you into a virtual hell you know like if you did something bad in your life are they just gonna if you're in jail you know or they, when you die are they just Haha, we're gonna torture you and upload you to hell you know that's kind of my first uh first negative thought anyway when i when i saw it and i was like "Ooh, that could be pretty bad if uh in the wrong hands there i don't know i guess we'll time will tell how that pans out but uh and then uh i was watching ancient aliens again because you guys know i love that show and uh it was on the same similar topic of that article which again is funny how that works out but uh Basically, the gods back in the day had different immortality elixirs, you know, like Ambrosia, which is actually a card in this game, I believe, and for Greek. But it's basically like an elixir of the gods that basically grants immortality to, you know, people who drink it, stuff like that. So it's kind of a theme throughout history, right, of humans wanting to basically cheat death or find a way to, you know, not die. So it's kind of a cool cool theme anyway um you've also got stuff like the immortal jellyfish which again a card in the game but uh they figured out that it can kind of live forever too by regenerating its cells and so that's kind of neat like there's already something on the planet that can live forever so is it is it possible that we can live forever there's a <clears throat> there was an inventor back in the 60s, I believe it was, who believed he had created an invention that had basically uh, anti-aging properties to it and basically found a way to, you know, reverse age people. And the guy had, like, no health complications whatsoever, wasn't showing any signs of anything wrong with him. Well... He's almost finished making this machine. They said he was like 95% done. And he had like a week left to, to build this. And mysteriously has a heart attack. His family was notified after he was cremated. <laughs> so, like they went ahead and destroyed the body right away. Didn't say anything to anybody about it. <clears throat> and then, as they're at the funeral, like his family's at the funeral for him their house is mysteriously burglarized and all the paperwork of this machine vanishes <laughs> conspiracy or what my goodness i thought that was so crazy i was like are you kidding me so this machine is actually still like the the guts of it have been tore out but it's actually a building it's called In integratron it's actually, I think it's in California somewhere, but it's this building that he basically built inside. But the idea was that the electromagnetism, he had like um, coil, like a Tesla coil in there and then like a resonator. But the, what was it? The electromagnetism that it put out was supposed to resonate at a similar Basically, you find a similar frequency that our cells naturally resonate at, and it resonates kind of coinciding with your cells. And by doing so, that basically resonating at that same frequency or wavelength or whatever, it's supposed to almost like supercharge your cells like, like a battery. And that was what was causing these anti-aging properties, reversing basically like your cell that was dying is now like supercharged and, you know, super strong again. Otherwise, you know, so essentially reversing, uh, you know, all your dying cells in your body, which anti-ages you. <clears throat> but yeah, so kind of interesting that the that technology is there and makes you wonder if... Uh, Somebody out there has it. Because <laughs> it fell into somebody's hands, so you know they tried it, right? Who have they tried it on is my question. But who seems like they, who, who looks like they've been living forever? I mean, clearly Bob Barker, right? And Price is right, dude. He's 
did he finally die or or what? <laughs> that guy seemed like he was living forever. He looked the same age for like 40 years, I swear. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe Betty White. Who, who knows? Somebody out there has tried that thing. But yeah, anyway, I thought the immortality thing was kind of interesting. <clears throat> Especially when I heard that story. But yeah, it makes you wonder what other crazy stuff's out there for that. If we've even figured it out. Because you, you got to think, like, stories in the Bible, and even, even in the Bible... Talk about humans then, back then, that lived, you know, eight, nine hundred years old. Like, how is that possible? Like, is it is it true? Like, did they actually live eight, nine hundred years? Or is that like, is it a fallacy, you know? I don't, uh, <laughs> like, why would they put it in there if it wasn't true, you know? Just don't know. I just don't know. Makes you wonder. <clears throat> I always had the the theory that that what happened was is that these people at that long ago were actually abducted abducted by you know different out of this world extraterrestrials or whatever aliens <clears throat> taken in a ship goes so we we've already proven that time or basically uh Basically, time traveling in the future is possible, right? If you go fast enough at a speed, you essentially are, can time travel if, you, if you're if you going faster than, I think, the speed of light or something like that. It's up basically a certain speed anyway. And then you're going so fast that you're actually going faster than time. So you could essentially, you know, leap forward in time. So there's stories, if you, if you, if you read and kind of go through different cultures and different histories that people have gotten like lost in caves and stuff like and come back like to their to their village and it's like a hundred years in the future and like they don't know anybody anymore and like all their family's been dead for god knows how long like tons of stories like this where this happens to people like just disappear and come back super far in the future <clears throat> How does this happen? Were they potentially abducted, flown super far out in BFE, and then brought back, and then, oh, now it's 100 years later? <clears throat> That's the only way I can think that, you know, people have lived 800 years old, because my thought is, like, somebody like Noah comes back, right? All of a sudden, it's, you know, 500 years later. He doesn't know anybody. He's asking everybody, like, hey, where's, you know, what year is it, or, you know... <laughs> When did so and so die? And they're like, "Oh, he died 500 years ago, man." <laughs> like, I don't know what you're talking about. <clears throat> so then he just naturally thinks, "Well, dang, I'm 500 years old." But really, he just, you know, his body's the same age because he just time traveled in the future, and, and you know, he's 500 years later. But he didn't age because <clears throat> he's moving so fast. That's kind of my thought anyway. I just don't know how else. Actually, I actually saw a study that says that humans, human bodies are like tapped out at 115 years of age. Like they don't believe humans, it's even possible for them to live past 115 years old. Except for that one lady. Lived like, I think she lived like 122, but they basically said that that's like an anomaly or something. <clears throat> But interesting. Things that make you decline. Always happens. <laughs> you guys jumped. You were like, oh, who's calling me right now? <laughs> I know you jumped. Don't, don't try to fool me. Hmm. It's round three. We're up by 246. Let's go, Oxy. Let's go with oxytocin here. We hold this lead. Ghoul's actually doing pretty decent. See how it just can completely wins games right there? Now I'm going to get it. <clears throat> I'm going to get it again round four. So that gives me a good shot to win four. And then five's a Halloween round. So I have a pretty good shot to win this game, I think. So I think we're winning the Halloween round. 
All right, let's get let's get you down. We'll do it like this. So we don't even need to win this round, I don't think. I think we're going to win four, and I think we're going to win five. <clears throat> Maybe. We'll see. One can hope. All right, what else we got here? We got I, Biometrics. Let's do it like this. Almost wanting to just hold on to hide until start of round four. <clears throat> just because then I'll be able to get him again on round five. Let's see here. Yeah, let's just dump you, we'll dump you, and we can dump Jekyll here. He like said, we're going to give him this round. <clears throat> Good round for him, too. Whew. Beat me by 770. Hot diggity dog. That means round five is going to be tough for me, for sure. I might not win round five, honestly. It's going to be close. All right, there's our Reaper, so we got to be careful on that one, right? We need to play it here. Let's do it like this. All right, you got a Heimdall down. That's unfortunate. <clears throat> it's going to give him some strength here into this round. All right, there's our ghoul looking juicy. Look at that thing. Whew. It's another, uh, what you call it? Uh, Holy Grail. All right, I want to go you. And let's go you. I want to hold plague till next round or next turn. So that it carries into the fifth round. Right? Yeah. All right, so we got a huge lead. We can try to throw our garbage cards here. I think's the plan. <clears throat> we got them by about 400. We can save Dracula. Definitely saving that. I think we can play you, though. It gives him minus 100 into the next turn, start of next turn. I can get behind that. Oh, I wasn't expecting that kind of turn from him. Holy moly. Did we just lose? Accidentally lose there? I think we did. Dang, we sure did. Holy moly. Well, that's unfortunate. I think we could have won that for sure. All right, well, that's what I get for holding back, I guess. But hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. As always, thank you for watching. And hit that like button and that subscribe button. Helps the channel out. But uh, all right, guys. Have a good night.